So Congro was nice enough to send me their new Congo Z1 laser engraver. So let's get this thing opened up, get it out of the box, and put together. And as you can see, there's not that many parts to this. And it does come with some very simple step-by-step -step instructions. And really, it only takes about 15 to 20 minutes to assemble this whole thing. With that being said, this doesn't come with a lot of things that you're probably going to want to get. Like any kind of cut surface so you don't ruin what's underneath it. For example, if you wanted to cut out this simple design, at the bare minimum, you're going to need a sheet of metal like this one to put down underneath it so you don't destroy things. And this is going to obviously limit your cut area. And I highly suggest getting one of these honeycomb cutting surfaces. And it comes with this really large piece of sheet metal to go underneath it. And it fits perfectly under the machine. You're also going to need some sort of ventilation setup. Seeing that cutting and engraving makes a ton of smoke and you don't want to be breathing that in. And my setup is pretty simple. It's just some tubing and fans to get everything out the window. And of course, you can set up something much simpler than this. And now with everything all set up, I just need to adjust the laser's focus by undoing some screws on the side. That way I can move it up and down and have it the perfect distance away from my material. So I just need to take whatever material I'm going to be using and this acrylic sheet that comes with the machine that is about seven millimeters thick and line everything up on that. And this makes adjusting your focus really easy. And then I just tighten up all the thumb screws and it's good to go. And to actually control this laser, you're going to need to use a computer. And the software you use is going to be up to you. There's a free one called Laser Gerbil and a paid one called Lightburn. I personally have only used Lightburn, and I have some files that you can download for free to help you with it in the description of this video. But either way, you'll be able to use a machine. And it was able to cut through this wood with no problem. And you can cut smaller parts like these, and stack them up, paint them, and end up with cool things like this. I just used some acrylic paint, super glue, and earring hooks. And of course, you can set it up to engrave and cut, so it'll do the engraving first, and then cut it out. And you're not only limited to engraving wood, because you can engrave, or at least mark on, stainless steel, along with any other coated metal, including anodized metals. And this marked the metal, but it didn't do it as dark as I wanted it to, so I redid it just at a slower speed, and it looks much better. And there's still some fine tuning I need to do to get rid of some of these lines in it, but it looks pretty good. So you can't cut anything that is clear, like this clear acrylic, but you can engrave into clear things if you put a mask on it. And to show you how to do that, I'm going to actually use the glass from this picture frame. So with the glass removed, I'm going to use some water washable paint and just kind of paint it on. And when brushing stuff on like this, it's going to leave lines which will actually show up in your engraving on this. So if you're needing everything to be as smooth as possible, I suggest a spray paint. But either way you go, make sure everything is all dry and make sure the back of the glass is clean. Because if you have any paint on the back of this, it's going to start engraving on the back as well. But with it all done, it looks pretty nice, and you need to get the paint off. Because this is water washable, I can just use an alcohol wipe and wipe it off, or just wash it off in the sink. And if you did use a spray paint, you're going to want to get some acetone as well to remove it. And with it all cleaned up and back in the frame, it looks really nice. And with a darker backing on this, you can see everything really clearly. So there's a lot of interesting things you can make using one of these lasers. And a lot of the things would make really good custom gifts, or even things that people would be willing to buy from you. And all of this sounds really good, but before you go out and buy one of these, I have some serious safety warnings about these type of machines. So you don't jump into this blind. And speaking about blind, these can blind you. So if you're looking at the laser at this angle, you can tell that it's really bright. So basically anyone at this level, like children, someone sitting down, or pets, can have their eyes damaged just by looking at this. They do come with these safety goggles and you should be wearing these anytime that the machine is running. And like I said before, you absolutely need ventilation for this. It's making a ton of smoke and depending on the material you're using, it could be very toxic. I really suggest getting an enclosure for this type of machine, seeing that you can get them relatively cheap and it will protect everyone in the room. Also be very careful what you're cutting and engraving on, like PVC will emit chlorine gas if you cut it, which can kill you. And I'll make sure to link to all the materials you can and can't use in the description below, or you could just take a screenshot of that little list. So as you can see, these machines can be very helpful and make a lot of things, but they also can be very dangerous at the same time. And really, as long as you have the basic knowledge of how everything works and what to use, what not to use, you should be fine with one of these machines. But let me know what you think in the comments. Are these machines really that dangerous if you know what you're doing with them? Or is it just a lack of knowledge? Well, that's about it for this video. Everything in it will be linked in the description below, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.